it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good to be here. I pictured you yesterday. Yesterday was Memorial Day weekend. Just grilling with the boys, your family, you know, because it's Tennessee, lots of ribs, maybe some chicken, maybe some brisket. Was was my fantasy even close? <laughs> Only partially true. I'm not uh, the uh, the barbecue master that Tate is, but uh, no, I was I was out grilling some chicken for the family for sure. Um, we had a a nice meal last night. Nice, nice. We've got do buddy the nightcap og scott bossman how are you i am great mark how are you good good my my fantasy for you memorial day weekend was very simple it was just cheese curds and beer and you just kind of gather the whole family around and just really you know that was it that was all you served i mean i'm i'm gonna add to the to the quality of your dream here not only did we have cheese curds and beer but we grilled brats and during the grilling of the brats, my sons and I were playing cornhole. So how much okay. more Wisconsin can you get? That, that you, okay. <laughs> you are really giving the Wisconsin people a lot of love yes. right now. So yes. that's fantastic. By the way, I'm so hard up for sports right now that I was actually watching in St. Louis, where I'm from, a cornhole competition on ESPN <laughs> with my wife. And like, we randomly just picked like somebody we wanted to win based on just his looks or his name or something. It was really it's interesting. <laughs> it, was it was great. Um, we've got the terrorist hunter, the most feared woman in the country, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Great, great. So my fantasy for your Memorial Day weekend was basically you and the family um, really just having a who messed with us list the last week and flying your drones, maybe doing like a little drone competition. You know, your husband was on the grill uh, with, you know, or ribs and chicken, neighbors. salmon. And the next thing you know, like there's an explosion. And then they all sort of celebrated. Oh, there were some fireworks. That's about as big as the explosion got though. We just were on the porch. We have a little fire pit, grilled some steaks. We had a little quinoa, some vegetables, corn on the cob. That's about it. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, we got the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, breathing in the mailing, breathing out the marketing. Mike, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. I uh, I had a Memorial Day fantasy for you. You and your big family were just out, uh, you know, grilling, you know, just the Italian specialties. <laughs> no. Um, well, the first half of the day was spent recovering from the fire station the day before, okay. and then got up and did some Pilates. I know you guys all love my love of Pilates, and uh, then and then uh, we went out. Actually, New Hampshire, just you know, next to uh, the the state above us, which I live on the border of. They had some socially distant restaurants open, so to close friends of ours, we went out and uh, got a little meal. Nice. Very nice. And some uh, fish and chips. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I think your fantasy was going out of the water. Completely <laughs> off. Um, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Doing well, thanks. My Memorial Day fantasy for you was very simple. You were just playing with the kids, swimming, and eating like an abundance of cheese to the point where like <laughs> at one point during the day, you actually threw up. And it was just like, it was too much cheese. Well, most of that is uh, true, you know, the throw up included with little kids, but uh, it wasn't due to cheese. So uh, we did spend a lot of time in the pool and it was a really nice day here in Vegas. We had a beautiful temperature. We actually heated up the pool to about 80 degrees because really, can you swim in a pool that's not 80 degrees? I don't know. It doesn't seem right. So uh, yeah, it was nice and warm. Great day. Nice, nice. And last but not least, the professor, the brain, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything 
InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. My fantasy for you and your family uh, on Memorial Day was just you guys were kind of hanging out and, you know, you were grilling. And then at some point, like you just got frustrated and started going online and um, looking for the best deal on Microsoft Surfaces. And that was like, then you just couldn't even eat anymore. Like you're like, okay, Memor guys, Memorial Day deals. We're going to upgrade our surfaces. You bought five surfaces because why not? You can. And you thought, well, what's, you know, I'll get one for everybody in the house plus one. Who cares? I can do it. Am I even close? Well, okay. Uh, you, you might be surprisingly close. Like here's the deal. Uh, didn't grow. Didn't grow. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, that, that's enough. And uh, what happened was my wife yesterday was telling me like, um, she's like, I'm tired of trying to look at these websites on my phone. And I'm like, well, here you go. Here's a surface for you. And so she's like, what is this? And I'm like, it's for you. It's my surface. She's like, well, what are you gonna do with it? I'm like, it's time to upgrade. So I did go surface shopping yesterday that is true i did find a good deal i found an uh an i7 surface pro i you know we, we you know what scott we don't care about it let's can we yes. get into the no our, our i i don't know we don't care about the i7 this. This is, You're, this is important only a pc I7. guy talks about the i7 chip no one cares hold, hold on listen yeah because guess what i uh, hear I, I i'm gonna let me finish and then i'll toss it back over to you I got an okay. i7 6, 16 meg 256 um, uh, hard drive, right? Now, you might say that, that only a PC guy would care about the processor, which might be true. But before this call, you were telling me about your new Mac being 32 meg. Only a Mac user would care about the megabytes and not the processor. Just saying. You need 32 for that thing. But you're close. Now, Mark, I envision that your memorial day was sitting there looking at the apple store looking for a new mac like i need more memory i got a memory hog here i got more memory and then like you you found out you needed more memory because your your computer was so slow as you were trying to type emails you were getting frustrated you're like i need a bigger computer am i right or am i right no not even close that was last week's problem that was last week's problem this, I was off this, by a yeah. week. i i hung out in the pool with the kids and the family. Um, and we had a nice little, like, we did veggie burgers, actually. Mike Zano, don't judge. And- uh, I like veggie burgers. Okay, good, good, okay. It was, it was, it was very nice. Um, well, this was fun, but we do have a topic. <laughs> and our topic this week for the round table is how are you maximizing your deal of the week? So. Scott Bossman, can you kind of just explain to everybody what I'm even talking about when I say deal of the week with your buyers list? Yeah, our, our best marketing platform is our buyers list. And the, the longer you're in this business, the more and more leads you're going to accumulate and they need to go on your buyers list and you need to hit that list frequently. So in our business, we've just made it a point for a really long time to do a deal of the week email midweek. And then we also have a Sunday blast. Um, kind of listing more of our properties, highlighting more of our properties. And a great thing happens over time as you continue to do this consistently is you, you're able to track metrics. You see what works well. You see what titles work well. You can keep track of uh, open rate for these emails. You know, we have a top 10 list of our best open, you know, open rates on these emails, best click rates, that type of thing. And you can really get a sense for what people, uh, what attracts people in opening an email. Um, our best ever open rate was probably about a month ago. We did have the word coronavirus in the title, but it was like 49% uh, of the emails were opened, which I had never, ever, ever seen before. Uh, it did result in one sale. So it's kind of cool. You can keep tracking the metrics in these tools. And, you know, it's a very cheap thing to do as well. MailChimp, your first 2,000 subscribers is free, AWeber. I don't know, two to 3,000 subscribers is free. So it's a platform that you can start right away. And then another topic that maybe somebody else might talk about is it's, it's a 
something, something that you can easily outsource to somebody if it's, a, if it's a thorn in your side. All right, well, fantastic. So let's just start with the technician, Eric Peterson. So Eric, how are you sort of maximizing your deal of the week? So um, we follow a methodology uh, very similar to what Tate taught everybody in um, some of our VIP uh, calls that we've done in the past. And um, that typically is going to involve us emailing our list multiple times per week, um, kind of repeating the same deal and, you know, resending it to people that don't open it the first time. Maybe at the end of the week, we're sending it to everybody again um, as we're kind of approaching the, the end of that time frame. So our deal runs from Tuesday through Monday every week. And, you know, we're going to offer either we're going to announce a new property or we're going to offer some kind of special on a property. That might be that we reduce a, a down payment. Maybe we reduce a dock fee. Um, Maybe there's something else that we're doing, um, but whatever that is, there's there's something special about that property for that given week, and it goes out to our list. Um, you know, it starts very specific, um, going to the people we feel will be most interested in that deal. So let's say we've got a Colorado property, and we know we have you know this many people that are interested in land in Colorado that's who's going to get it first. They're going to have first opportunity to buy that property. And later on, as the week goes on, if that hasn't sold, we might open it up and send it to our whole list. Um, on top of that, I mean, we're utilizing uh, not only email, but, but landing pages, um, video content. Um, we're also utilizing some text messaging uh, intermixed with all of that. So um, our deal of the week, uh, tactics are, are rather large, I guess, you know, I mean, we do a lot, but there's a lot of value to it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is the one asset you own. Is there any fear that with all the things that you've got going on, you're going to get more unsubscribes? No, I mean, we get unsubscribes all the time, but we're also adding new leads to that list all the time. And uh, just like you say, Mark, you know, I mean, if people aren't subscribing or unsubscribing, then I'm not emailing enough. So uh, it doesn't bother me at all. All right. Fantastic. Um, I want to talk a little bit about segmentation with the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. So Mimi, can you kind of, kind of walk us through, because it's because Eric sort of alluded to it where like if someone's sort of raised their hand at some point in time said, yeah, I mentioned in Colorado property, he's emailing those per people first. That's a segment of your list. So you don't just have one big list, you segment them into smaller segments of, of the same buyers list. So yeah, you have one buyers list within, but within that buyers list, you might have five or six segments depending on state or how they've self-segmented. Can you talk a little bit about that? Right, well, in the CRM, when people say that they're interested in hunting or fishing or electricity or paying cash or terms, five acres, 10 acres, right? I'll, I'll, I note that in the tags. And so um, I'm finding that my open rates are higher and I'm getting more interest from people when I send these bulk mails that are tailored to their specific wants as opposed to just general land coming to them that might not even be in the same state as they're in. So, and then Additionally, if I see that they've gone in there multiple times, then I can really tell who's interested. And so it isn't really just an issue of um, I sent the email out. I can actually then go in and my second or third emails target the people that I can tell are truly interested. So that's been working better for me recently is to actually customize the, the deal of the week into um, segments like that for interested parties. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, Zen master, Mike Zeno, what about you? What, what are you kind of doing to, to optimize your list? Yeah. Are, I you, think se everybody are you segmenting? Said, yeah. Similar to what Mimi said, more so in the CRM, we've been experimenting with the tags and the uh, sending out batch emails and, and drilling down. So that's been kind of exciting to try to, because you can actually see how many times they've opened or looked at uh, a certain email. So for sure that, and, um, 
yeah, I think there's power in that, you know, to be able to see, you know, um, you know, a drill down, as you say, because you can really refine that based on uh, multiple parameters. So, yeah, I think uh, definitely. And I don't know much else to add. Everybody really, I mean, this is some serious content. Everybody just kind of threw out in terms of their strategies and whatnot. And I agree and I'm on board with all of them. And we use variations of, of what they've said. So, um, yeah, but if, to your question, yes. Um, drilling down into those, you know, tagged leads and being able to segment them, I think that's very powerful. All right, great, great. Tate, I mean, I, I know you talk a lot about this with your coaching clients in the VIP room, but as far as just what you're seeing as in this market right now, the most effective sort of email strategy, list strategy, is there anything that you're doing differently? I mean, it's not necessarily different than what I've already said to do, but I think the number one thing here is consistency, right? We're, I'm very fortunate and pretty much when we send out a deal of the week, it almost always sells. In fact, when it doesn't sell, it's more of a surprise than when it does sell. And it's not because my list is massive or anything like that. It's because I'm consistently showing up every single week to my buyers and presenting them with deals that they want at irresistible prices. And if you send out your first deal of the week and when you do, it will likely be crickets. You will likely not hear back from anyone. And that's normal. In fact, I would say that it's going to take you maybe a month, maybe longer than that for people to start recognizing your, your email. And it takes time for you to move out of the spam folder and into the inbox. And, and the way that you do that is you show up, you be consistent. And if you can master that, I think the deal of the week is uh, kind of one of the best kept secrets. Um, I remember when I was first met you, Mark, you told me, you know, your, your deal of the week, that's like, um, that's like the key to success in this business. And it's all about building that up and getting it to be strong and full of active buyers. And if you can accomplish that, your property will fly off the shelf. And I remember I got, you know, 15 or 20 people and I mailed to them uh, for the first time for the deal of the week. And nothing happened. And I was so disappointed in myself and you. And you said to me, Tate, well, what did you expect? You expect it to work the first time? Re-email them. Obviously, they didn't open it. So resend it. And I kept resending it and changing things up. And eventually, I don't want to say perfected, but we came up with a, an approach that really works for our buyers. And now that consistency has paid off to, you know, pretty regularly scheduled sales. And it's a good it's a good position to be in. And like Eric, I don't care if you unsubscribe. Every time we email, we get a handful of people that unsubscribe. It doesn't hurt my feelings because I don't want to pay for you to be on my list, right? If you're not a serious buyer. So it's okay. All right. Fantastic. So last but not least, Scott Todd, anything that you want to add? Any final nuggets of email list wisdom? you want to impart? I'd say a couple of things. One, uh, remember you're, the market is always talking to you, right? Like the market is always looking at what you're doing and you can look at your click through rates. You can look at your open rates and it's telling you whether your message is hitting or not. Okay. So if you're, if you're mailing and you see, for example, a lot of people opening, but not enough people clicking, well then you didn't make that call to action strong enough. Okay. That's on you. It's not your list's fault. It's your fault. Now go make your, now the next time go make it stronger and learn, learn from it. Right. And that's what Tate was just talking about, like finding your voice and, you know, getting better at it over time. If, if you're seeing that the, that the click rates aren't there, uh, the open rates aren't there. Well, then what are you doing? You're, you're not giving them a, a headline that, makes them want to open it up. And it's funny because Scott Bossman mentioned like all of the things that he looks at in terms of the open rates and the click rates. And I'll tell you what, like uh, just, a, I don't know, about three weeks ago, I was in the car with my daughter and she had up, um, she had up my, my email list and we were going through, we're driving and she, and I'm like, okay, what was last week's click rate? And so she's telling me what the, what the click rate was and, and what the open rate was, right? Like she's telling me that. And I'm like, what was the headline again? And so she's telling me the headline. And then all of a sudden, as we're going through this, it's almost like a game. As we're going through this, I realize, like, holy cow, there is a pattern. Like if I say this, then the click rates go up. 
okay? Like the, the number of clicks go up. Or if I use this, it's, not, it's weaker. And so just kidding with her, I said to her, I'm like, well, next week for uh, the Sunday Blast, let's use the words open me. Like based on what I was seeing, I said, let's use open me. And you know what, Mark? I just looked at her right now. The open me was double what anything else was, right? Like I, it's a standard, but this one was double. So if you sit down and look at the analytics behind it and just start thinking, right? Like don't just look at it, look at what the numbers are telling you and be, just be a student of the numbers, be a student of, of the marketing piece and look for the patterns there. You'll find the patterns in your, in your, um, in your messages. But then there's one more thing I wanted to remind everybody is, look, if you're going to do a deal of the week, and I, I see lots of people doing their deal of the week, and that's cool. But don't assume that people are, one, looking at your, at your deal of the week and going, oh, my gosh, I got to read it, right? Like, so some people will, and some people will just let it sit in their email forever. They just don't look at email. And not every day, not every hour, not every minute. They may not be like you. They might go once a week. They might go once every two weeks. But you know what you can do is if they haven't opened it within a couple period, a couple days, like I know the system I use, I can do a resend. So midweek, we do a resend to the people that haven't opened it. And guess what happens? We hit them again at a different time when they're like, oh, yeah, I wanted to see that. And then we go and we, we squeeze more out of it. And that's how we're doing is we're, we're trying to like always squeeze more out of the emails that we've already done. One last thing, Mark, I'll just yeah. say that is if you, if you're afraid of emailing someone, okay, because they might unsubscribe as everybody else has said on this call, like they don't care if they get unsubscribed or not. And I agree with that. Like if I, if I don't get unsubscribed, well, then I'm paying for them to be on a list to do nothing. And if they're going to unsubscribe, guess what? They weren't going to buy from me anyway, but yet I'm paying for them. But here's the thing, go sign up for like, I don't know, go to mypillow.com, for example, and just sign up for their list. You will get two to three emails a day, oftentimes the exact same headline, exact same offer, because they know one thing, you're not paying attention. So if they can hit you two or three times a day, and I got to tell you something, the stuff doesn't change. Like they're selling a pillow. The pillow deal is the pillow deal, right? Like it's 1995 and it's going to be 1995 tomorrow. And it might be 1998 the next day, but guess what? It's the same thing. It's a pillow. So if you don't think that you can get three emails a day out of what you're selling, come on, you're not thinking about it right. Yeah. I, I, I really liked everything you said. I owe Bossman five bucks because um, we made a bet that during the time you were talking, you were going to say the word Fibonacci. And you didn't. I did so not. No. See, that was disappointing. But uh, but everything else you said was was really great. Uh, and I, did you lose I, the five dollars. I lost it. But that's not here or there. Awesome. Um, what what I what was what was really interesting though is is the is your mindset. And Tate alluded to it too. And and it's not just the tactics. It, it's, it's sort of that mindset of, uh, you know, some will like when it, it's, as far as like opening some will some won't, so what, someone's waiting. And that person who's waiting, you need to keep showing up for. And, and you know, what Mimi said and, and Mike, as far as the segmenting, that's even more powerful. And it's, it's really just about all of this. So if you, you can have all the best tactics in the world to have the highest open rates, but if you're not doing it consistently, your list won't trust you at some point. And they're like, well, you know, he showed up this week, but she didn't show up next last week. So wait, who's, who's this company again? This, um, I love land.com forgot about them. So you want to be there. You want to be top of mind. You can market like a billion dollar company without having a billion dollar budget. It's, it's so effective. So hopefully this, um, was really, uh, valuable for the listeners. I do want to just mention that when Scott was talking about with his daughter, the, the wording in his headline and what ads were getting open and which weren't. It reminded me of boardroom. And so our boardroom program takes that even deeper. When we look at 
our past coaching clients' analytics. And we are able to use their metrics to help everyone in that very small room maximize their marketing. What's been your highest performing ad? What's been your best headline? And sharing all that. So if you've been through one-on-one coaching and you're listening to this, then you certainly want to schedule a call to learn more about the boardroom and that small mastermind group and how it can help you get to the next level in year two, year three, year four as your business hockey sticks up. Um, Also, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally change your life. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Learn more, schedule a call with the dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, or the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training, forward slash training and schedule a call. So now we're at that point where we all get to find out from the Terrace Hunter, the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable, Mimi, for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives, what do you got? So this is an article from the Land Think website. It's called, uh, How's the COVID-19 Pandemic Impacting Recreational Land Sales? Thought it was interesting, some of the things it says here, it talks about how more people, they're still doing closings, but more people are doing them online with Zoom and with signnow.com and all the tools that, that, that we've always used, right, before. It, there used to be a credibility issue where you had to talk to the person buying your land to make sure that they were comfortable with doing it online with a person they'd never met. Well, now because of COVID-19, that's becoming the standard. So that's wonderful for us, right? We'll have less of an issue building that credibility. Um, but additionally, it just says that sales are doing just as well as they were before. So that, that's reassuring. But it's always an interesting article. Uh, yeah, that's that's fantastic. And it's and it sort of just reiterates everything that we've been saying about our own land businesses that it's, it's going very well. Has, has anyone had any kind of change in their business? Eric, has anything come up for you? Um, certainly not in a negative way. I mean, if anything, the change has been, we've been doing more sales. Yeah. Scott Bossman. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing negative today. It's still knock on wood, no defaults today and, and sales are up. Zed master. Yeah, pretty much the same. It's both of uh, what Eric and uh, Bossman said. Terrace Hunter. Yeah, I'm, I, uh, I'm having a great month. I'm <laughs> okay. I'm really happy <laughs> with land sales are good. I just got to make sure I just keep the land coming in. The notorious Tate Litchfield. Yeah, I kind of echo what everybody else says. Like Mimi, it's been another really, really fantastic month. It's a good time to be a land investor, to put it that way. Scott Todd, have sales yeah. been going up at, at a Fibonacci type rate? Not at a Fibonacci type rate, but good enough. Good enough. Eric, what are you going to say? I was just going to add, you know, if I were to to come up with one thing that, um, you know, has been, I won't even say it's negative, but just different is it's, it's taking a little longer most of the time to close deals. Um, so from the point that we're sending out documents to getting them back, people are, are struggling a little more to get a notary and do some of that work, especially uh, the older generation. But I mean, we're still managing to get them done. Uh, it's just taking a little longer sometimes. Is anyone else seeing that on their side as well? Scott Bossman, you were, you were nodding your head. Are you having the same issue? Um, not, not necessarily. I was just, I guess, lamenting. Um, but no, I, I, I haven't seen that significantly. Mimi has. Mimi? I have two deals where I've sold the property and the people I'm buying it from haven't gotten the paperwork yet. And I have to go to FedEx up to two sets of docs tonight because I got to make sure they get done because I don't want to lose the deal, the sale. So yeah, it's taking longer. And the paperwork's just getting lost in the mail. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I rarely ask the listeners for a favor. In fact, I can't remember the last time I asked them for a favor besides subscribing, rating, and reviewing the podcast. Now, if you do that and you send us a screenshot of that review, 
to support at the landgeek.com, we're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money in 30 days or less. But I've got another ask. If anyone out there listening has any direct contact with a gentleman who's a best-selling author named Jay Papazan, him and Gary Keller wrote The One Thing. Jay has been rescheduling now to be on our podcast for the fourth time. I get the feeling that if someone knew him personally, it was like, man, these guys are going to ask you some really interesting questions. You're going to have a lot of fun with them. Come on the podcast. And you won't be the only best-selling author that they've had. They've talked to Grant Cardone. They've talked to Greg McCune. They've talked to Nir Ayal. They've talked to Bob Berg from The Go-Giver. Like, you know, that would be helpful. So anyone who knows Jay Pabazon, email him, call him, text him, and say, you know what? Give those guys some love. Don't reschedule on them again, because Mark can only take so much disappointment in the mists of COVID-19. I'd really and you appreciate love that it. book, man. Like that's your go-to like. It is. I've, I've got four copies right here. Yeah, I four mean, you copies. give it out at every boot camp. Do they not know who they're messing with? I mean, Mike McCallowitz has been on twice. Come on. It's not like we're a new podcast. Send the word. Send the word. Okay. Anyways. Come on, Land Geek Army, let's go. Land Geek Army, you, you, someone knows him. Or you know someone who knows him. Just, I'm saying, that would really help. All right, well, I thought this was a really great roundtable discussion. Um, thanks again, everybody. And uh, should we all do this? Yeah? Count to three. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. 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 Not bad. <laughs> He's like... Why do I keep coming here every Tuesday and doing this? <laughs> is that is that the thought process, Mimi? Right after we do that? No, no, I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's fun, right? Yeah. It's fun. We're yes. fun. So tonight is gonna be fun. Uh flight school QA call on Zoom. So for the people that missed it, where, where can they go? Will there be a recording? Because by the time this comes out. There might be some people that had some questions about flight school and then they didn't, of course, as we were talking about buyers list, didn't open my email to remind them, Hey, this is your zoom link. So are you guys going to do like so, a replay or is it like, if you don't show up, you don't show up. We're not going to, well, we do this once or twice a month. And uh, I would just point them to the next great opportunity. Uh, and that is June 15th. Uh, we're going to have a Q and a session with none other, than, none other than Scott Todd at 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, no, I'm kidding. yeah, that'll be a great time. Tonight is kind of a lounge event. Mike and I do this about once a month. We open up the lounge and we talk all things land investing with with people who are interested. But uh, the Scott Todd will join us uh, June, June 15th. It's a good thing this is coming out after tonight because they'd all be like, well, why? we'll wait for Scott Todd. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I said it, dude. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey, you, want, you want to know something that's really cool? Yeah. Eric, Eric Peterson created like this investor ninjas class. Okay. It's, it's basically Facebook marketplace um, and Airtable. He shows in Airtable how to manage all your properties, all your leads, how to automate it. Like this thing, this thing is huge. I sat there and watched it and I'm like, I thought I had a good system. No, no, no. Eric blows it away, right? And really, so what's really? really cool is being able to learn that system from from Eric. And he gives you he gives you the table, the air table, the base. He gives it to you. The, the links in the class. It's password protected, so you got to know that you got to know how to get in it. But I'll tell you what, like, it's available for Investor Ninja members. Like, it's good. Like, it's really, really good. I'm not saying the other stuff's bad, but it's really good. It's really good. You know, you know what, speaking of like, if I have to hear the word masterclass one more time, is this, I mean, seriously, like if, if everyone's in quarantine or not going out, like I get you want to like watch some famous person, you know, teach a guitar or something like on a, a masterclass, 
but like what Eric is teaching you will actually not just make you money, which we can all make more of, but save you time, which we can't get more of. The finite resource. I love I'll tell you it. What, it's, um, it's, it's funny how there's certain words that during this thing, it's just like, I can't stand it. And as much as I love my surface, sis, I could have multiple. And by the way, my daughter, by, you're talking about, she did ask me today for a surface. I'm like, oh, are you ready to trade in your MacBook for that? And she's like, no. But oh, okay, good. She, ask, she wanted both. And I'm like, no, no, you can't have both. It's, it's one or the other. You got to pick one or the other. So she, for right now, she's staying on the other side, but I'll, I'll convert her. My wife's converted. I'll convert. Yeah. But my, my, the, my middle son, it has a surface. So I am a surface owner. He, he and there's a point where I thought, well, if you're going to rebel, like drink and do drugs, don't, ha- don't get a surface. But no, he chose a surface. <laughs> he, listen, listen, he is more than welcome to come to Uncle Scott's house. I will welcome him with open arms. He's family just from the surface. Like, that's it. That's all it takes is he just shows up with the surface. I'm like, Her, hug, come on, you're here. And he might like Florida better too because of the water and all this. But that's a different story. The, you know what commercial I can't stand? is the the microsoft teams commercial where the guy's like have you seen it and he's like oh it's uh, terrible we're, we're managing our covid19 process on teams and at the end like that part's okay but then at the end they go to the black screen it shows teams and he goes we're living on teams every time i hear that i just want to take my surface and toss it in the pool like microsoft you're killing me with that ad stop it Okay, so, so you're sick of the word teams. I'm sick of the word masterclass. Are there any other words that we're sick of? COVID, COVID we're definitely COVID. sick of. Quarantine. Are, are we, social quarantine? Social distancing. Social distancing. Oh, I'm so tired of it. So ready to get my life back. It, yeah. Uh, if anyone mentions more, you know, viral load to me, that's a phrase. Oh, be careful. I don't know if six feet's far enough because of the viral load, if you sneeze, that can go further. Today, I went to Costco and I guess I didn't follow the rules because in the back of the store where they have the water and the toilet paper and the paper towels, I guess I didn't follow the rule. And I guess it's just one way. I didn't know that. Like who knew that you could have one way aisles in the grocery store or whatever, but apparently you do now. So I'm going down the aisle and in Costco, you have to wear a mask. Okay. Like it is the rule. Like they won't even let you in the building without a mask. And it's the funniest thing because I'm, I'm pushing the buggy down. I'm trying to get some water. And this lady says to me, she goes, she goes, this is one way. And I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. But then as I look at her, I see that she doesn't have on a mask. And then I'm like, how did I'm she like, get, get in without a mask? She took it. I, I guarantee you she took it off when she got inside. Like she, she went through the. Because they so, make your face break out. Yeah. So then I said, I said, you might want to put on a mask. That might help too. <laughs> you just walk away. <laughs> nice. Hey. We're going to start a throwdown at yeah. the Costco. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah Mike Zane, are you, are you more busy at the fire station now? Are you less busy? Are, are people giving you more love because like you're like a frontline worker no yes there's all kinds of uh food getting dropped off all the time and 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 uh stuff like that people being very supportive but i think the call volume for a while had was slowed down because it's just with less people out and about right less cars on the road less uh less actions happening but uh, uh we're still steadily doing calls but it did slow down a little bit okay Nice. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody. And, um, you know, see everybody on the, uh, on the flip side, I guess. That could be another word that you could just try to avoid is flip side. Themes. What is it? Themes. Themes? Themes. We're living on teams. Teams. Okay. Well, we should do a masterclass on teams and how to Uh avoid. Hey, on social distancing, can we do a master class on social distancing? We should yeah. definitely do a master class on social distancing. And the impact that social distancing has on COVID-19? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And <laughs> perhaps a master class on uh, reducing the viral load. Yeah. You know what causes that viral load, don't you? 
Virus shortage. Shortage of RAM on your Mac. <laughs> That's how we're ending this? Now we've got, a, now, at least now we have a show title. It's kind of, the show title is Shortage of RAM on your Mac. That's it. There you go. End it. All right. Bye, everybody. See ya. Yeah.